What up, listeners? It's me, Jessica Williams, and you might not know this, but Two Dope Queens only exist because of people like you. You step up, you pitch in, and you make our show happen. That's right, we are listener-supported, and I absolutely cannot thank you enough. This month, we have a goal to get 300 listeners donating to help Two Dope Queens keep on keeping on. And if you donate $60 or more, get this, you will receive the first ever one and only official Two Dope Queens t-shirt as a special thank you gift. It's gray, it's comfy, it looks hot AF, and it has our faces on it. So like, what more could you want anyway? So hop to it. Go to twodopqueens.org slash donate or to donate via text, which is way faster. And you know we don't want to waste your precious time anyway. Then text the word QUEEN to 70101. And thank you, you incredible people. We actually could not do this without you. Whoopi, do you ever talk to Ted Danson? Uh, no. You don't? <laughs> okay. That's like 20 years ago. Yeah. I know, oh but people God. like to know. So I have boned so many people since then. <laughs> so there was a time when Ted Danson and Whoopi Goldberg were like, Dating, And they were like a full-on, like, Hollywood royalty couple. Yes. So they were dating, and there was a roast. And as you know, roasts are typically not televised. So you can be, like, as raw and as controversial as you want to be. But Whoopi and Ted took it too far because they had him— they came up with the idea that he should show up in blackface. One. And roast her. Two. And say the N-word a lot. Three. And jokes about watermelons. And then, because, you know, the internet didn't really exist, so people couldn't get, like, super pissed about it. Right. And then when, like, Essence was, like, the one magazine that was like, hey, that was really wrong. And then Whoopi was like, yeah, he did it in good fun. Like, it wasn't. Yeah, she was like, this is our kind of sense of humor, which I'm like, keep that in the home. Yeah, like, keep it in the sheets. And also, I remember, like, it was on Entertainment Tonight, you know? And I think this was, like, back when, like, John Tesh was still hosting and like LOL. he didn't go to journalism school to be like hey these fucking numb nuts over here did something wild yeah it's just crazy how like if this happened now Ted Dance's career would have been destroyed yeah it would be over there'd be no The Good Place there'd be no Becker there's no Curb Your Enthusiasm guest star roles there's no CSI he did a lot post that blackface incident mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What would you do if you were dating a significant other and there was a roast and they want to do something that's obviously racially insensitive, but it's like, hey, we're together. It's fine. I mean, it depends. You know, it really depends on how good the D is, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we're back. Hashtag a dinosaur story with a brand new episode. It's me, Ms. J. Willie, a girl with some big ass hair and some big old dreams. And me, Phoebe Robinson, a girl standing in front of a boy, asking him to love her. LOL, just kidding. That's from Notting Hill. Hashtag Hugh Grant. Ooh, zaddy. Anyway, <laughs> let's move into what's basically the opposite of Hugh Grant, which was our show at Bonnaroo. I mean, we had some really, really, really talented people. Yeah, we had two tiny Khaleesi's that go by the name of Tegan and Sarah. Oh, MG. It was such a thrill to have them on the show. I've been a fan of theirs for so long. We follow each other on social meds. It was so great to finally meet them in purse. Plus, we've got Joe Firestone and Chris Garcia. Rock and roll, dude. Bonnaroo forever. Forever, ever. Forever, forever ever. ever. How are you guys doing? Good? So cute. I'm loving this. Thank you. We got these capes custom made for this event. They said it we could they said we couldn't pull it off. Yeah. This is like my bodyguard <laughs> moment. I feel so good. Seriously? I feel just like Whitney Queen Houston. Of the night. Right yeah, this is great. I'm excited. This is iconic. Yeah. <laughs> you need to find a Kevin Costner in the house. Is there a Kevin Costner guy for me here? A bodyguard who wants to protect me? Somebody that'll me? take a bullet if you have to. Take a bullet to. for me? Great. Cool. The, it's like the an MC. That was too late. The silence, like, really hurt. The silence hurt. That's fine. I see. (laughs) If it's any consolation, I would seriously debate taking a bullet for you. What? 
If I could plan it out so that I could make sure that I wouldn't die. Okay, what's and, your plan? And especially since I have health insurance, then I would like go and do it. Okay, so what's your plan? I would need to calculate that it's coming at just the right angle for me to go and take like a flesh, you know, like some, like he would just get my shoulder or my arm or like, you know, something that's not gonna super hurt me, you know? So you, come on, I would take it a bullet to the lung for you. You would not. You're like lying. This is crazy. <laughs> Even like looking at her face now. We've been working together for so long. It was so hard long. to get I through know. that sentence. It you, was hard. You like stumbled and skipped a little bit. Like I knew. <laughs> There's just no way. But also like don't make that many enemies. You know, don't, yeah. don't, don't make any enemies. Uh, well, I'm happy that we're here. This has been, uh, this has been a good week. I'm from Cleveland, so the Cavs are in the finals. Don't boo, we won yesterday, so we're not gonna get swept. Sports are fine. No, sports are amazing. It's like about like America and kind just of. like. I feel like that narrative is pretty crazy. Like no, but sometimes it's... like when I watch the Super Bowl, cause I grew up in a football family, I'm like, this is like a really like straight white American male text to me. But there's like so a, many. It, it, the NFL feels like a very conservative text to me in a way that sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't like this. But it's, it's so many people of color in football. Right, but the, the thing that I don't like is the way they don't take care of these people of color a That's lot of the true. time. That's and true. if they want to say something or stand up against something, then it's like an issue, which I fucking hate. That's true. So I bet it, it feels conservative to me. Does it feel conservative to you at all? I mean, yeah, it is, but I still like the sport. That's cool. You should like, like so many people love sports. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I went to the, earlier this week, I went to the NBA finals in Cleveland with my brother. That's awesome. Yeah, I took, I took him as a, a present for Father's Day, which is uh. like super cool. And we had a great time. We were like six rows from the, the court. Like we we're so close to LeBron, it was great. And so we're was like, he hot? Like, no, LeBron is like super hot. It cool. was like, cool. cool, cool, cool. It was like, good for you. Yeah. Um, He's like so successful. Yeah. <laughs> like, does he need another thing? Yeah. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and uh, in our section was like, we were like the only people of color. And these two, like, o- this like older white couple, uh, male, female, they, were, they came in to sit down in their seats next to us. And they had like these VIP passes. So I don't know if like, one of them like works for the Cavs or like got a hookup, but like they were like, I guess, fancy people, LOL. And uh, we're like all watching a game and then like halfway through the game, the, the wife leans over and she goes, uh, excuse me, how much did you guys pay for your tickets? But like she didn't ask any of the white people around. She just wanted to figure out like why we were there and how much we paid to be there. She was like, is this class pass? Like, how yeah, did you get here? Like, how did you? Cause I pay full price. Was this a Groupon? What happened? And it's like, no, I fucking work, bitch. Um, but it was just like, really, it was just like, I hate that. And she didn't ask any of the white people like how much that. they pay. Like she didn't like crane her neck. It was just on us. How much did you pay to sit here? And I was like, I got this as a present for my brother, so I'm not gonna say. And she's like, Oh, okay, that's, that's a great. Good read. That's like a gentle read. I yeah. feel like you like dragged her gently. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not say to your fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good like Real Housewives drag. Yeah, it was cool. And then um, it's we, the thing that I hate about basketball are the the cheerleaders when they have them come out and dance. It just ma- it makes me so bummed out because they're wearing these like sky high heels they can't like really dance like full out without like risking like a like blowing out their knee and they're just like literally just popping their tits out the whole time and it just feels like so heteronormative and I'm like this makes me bummed out like I want to see some like hot and like so then they have like a male dance team they're called the screen team the Scream Team? The Scream Team. It's trash. Okay, and what, what's the concept of this? They wear, like, head-to-toe, like, uh, gray sort of denim outfits. Uh-huh. With, like, band... They, they're the most covered up that dudes can be. Yeah. And the women are just like, boo, 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 like, They're, like, out. wearing hockey masks. Yeah, and it's, like, bandanas on their heads and, like, just high yeah. top. Like, you don't even get to see an ankle. Like, you see nothing. Yeah. 
on these men. And I'm like, this is so sexist. Like, maybe I want, like, a Magic Mike moment to happen. Oh, my God. You know? They, they, would they, literally, they would literally cancel the entire NBA as soon as that <laughs> happened. But no, that was my cousin's job for a while, was like a Cavaliers girl. Wait, seriously? That's yeah, so cool. Told, I know, now we're like, that's cool, right? Yeah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> no, but that was her job. And I, um, to me, I'm always afraid, especially since I'm, I'm of my boobs, like 34 or double D, yeah. I'm always afraid that I'm going to pop a titty out. Okay, but you should just be comfortable with your, your dub Ds, you man. You think so? Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll think about it. I'll definitely workshop this idea. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. All right. I love your fashion story. Thanks. This is like a little, a little art school realness, I feel like. I love that. Well, I'm wearing this. This outfit's from Target. I like, am surprised that... Target's fashion is like this good. No, they were popping off. They were really popping off when I was That's there. I cool. spent like $300 yesterday. You s <laughs> what other outfits did you get from Target? I got a couple of separates. You'll see. It, it was a mess. I was a mess. And then I didn't come in super prepared, but I wanted to be very prepared for the festival. So I got like a blanket and then I got like a deck of Uno cards. <laughs> I got regular playing cards. I just wanted to be amongst the people <laughs> and be one of them. So with the Uno cards, you feel like you're of the people? Yes, I just want to be a part of the community. That's like something like, is anybody walking around with cards here today? I like that, but that felt like very much like a politician being like, what yeah. do regular people like, Uno? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very much like Hillary Clinton, like yeah. towards the end, being like, I like art. Like, yeah. mm. She's like, I carry around hot sauce. It's like, no, you yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. What was it? She was like, fried chicken, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's like so awkward. Love you, but. Did you see that video of like uh, Mitt Romney trying to play Jenga and he like knocks the tower I did it, over? but it sounds triggering. It was what is great. it? It's just like him like hanging out at home and like I guess they, they were having like a family game of Jenga uh -huh. and he like goes to take a wooden block out and completely collapses. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Nobody does that when they play Jenga. And that's like how he lost like the election. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Well, my favorite Mitt Romney thing is when he's like taking a photo with a bunch of black young kids. Oh, yeah. And his instinct was, this was 2011, 2012. Yeah. His instinct was, oh, Hey guys, who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really intense lyric of who let the dogs yeah. out. <laughs> but I found out when I was older that they were talking about like who let like, you know, like atomic dogs out. Like who let these fucking freaky guys out? That's what it's about. That's what it's about? Yeah. I thought it was about literal dogs. Yeah, I mean. Like this whole, until right now. Yeah, okay. all of the soundtracks they did for like dog movies yeah. in that year. <laughs> yeah, you would think. But no, it was about like dogs. Like, a wooga, uh. like that kind of dog. <laughs> That's a crazy lyric. What's yeah. like some of the shittiest, craziest lyrics you've ever heard in a song? So, we were listening to this song the other <laughs> oh, day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I forget that it's uh, supposed to be, and the woman goes, he's going to eat my booty like, like some groceries. groceries. That's fucking disgusting. And I hate the way she delivers it of like, and he's got to eat my booty like groceries. Like, that's like, crazy. It's like... That's literally her first feature, and she's like, Mom, Dad, I got my first song on the radio. Yeah, uh -huh. And they're like, so excited. <laughs> and they turn on, they're like, whoa, okay, cool, cool. Butt stuff, cool, cool. Um, but also, like, he has to? Yeah, it's like... That's like what you're putting on your Tinder profile, yeah. like, out of the gate? Yeah, it's like pretty aggressive. Um, it's like, make it an option. I know, Somebody but like, just low-key dragged Phoebe in the front row and was like, Phoebe, you love butt stuff, as if okay. you don't know. I don't, like, love butt stuff. Like, that's a I, lot. I, I don't feel... Like, if there was a butt stuff flag, would it be your face on no, it? No, no. <laughs> but I'm your like... Your silhouette. <laughs> it's fine. I just, like, wouldn't sing about it. Like, I wouldn't be like, here's a melody, butt stuff, butt, 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 butt. Yeah, like, yeah. I just wouldn't they do were that. like, you have this whole entire like yeah. studio time to make whatever lyrics yeah. you want. Do you want to talk about curing AIDS? Do you want to talk about like Malala? Right. She's like, no, he's got to eat my booty like groceries. <laughs> <laughs> That's but it funny. Is, it's a sex positive song. It's just yeah. aggressive. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. It's, int it's something that if I was in the car with my mom, I would totally turn the station to like jazz. 
Do you remember reason. when my neck, my back came out like in yes. high school? Yes. That came that out in song high school is incredible. So many terrible, like awkward car rides home from high school with my parents because of that song. Yeah, and it. It's just funny because you could do my neck, my back, and then they would bleep pussy and then yeah. say crack. And you're like, all right, well. Yeah. <laughs> and just the opening lyrics of like, all you ladies pop your pussy like this. Yeah. What does that look like? <laughs> she's a national treasure. I really? Wanna, yeah, she's great. I want to follow her on Instagram. I Me love too. somebody like that yeah. who like, you know has an Instagram and you're like, what are you doing? What are yeah. you up to? Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. We're going to follow her. in the back. Yeah, that's great. All right. Uh, you guys ready for more show? You guys are a fun crowd. It's going to be great. Really love you guys. Our next act that we're going to bring out, we are huge fans of her. She's done the show before. She's currently a writer on Late Night with Seth Meyers. Please give it up for Joe, Joe Firestone! Hi, guys. How you doing? Keep it going for Phoebe and Jessica. How about that? That's so great. Oh, so great. Hey, I got a question for you guys. You guys ever uh, get a haircut thinking it'll change your look, but then you remember you still have your fucking face? That's pretty terrible. Every time I get a haircut, I look like more like the national treasure symbol. Just like... Pyramid around an eyeball. <laughs> That's okay. I, it just, you just get uglier and uglier. After you're teen, it just goes downhill. It's so upsetting, because if you're an ugly teen, then what, what's the point? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I found a chin here the other day that was, it definitely was supposed to be an eyelash. There's no question. There's no question. It looked like an eyelash. It felt like an eyelash. Why did it go down there, you know? You gotta stay where you belong. But I do, I'm very, I, despite what you may hear, I'm very confident. Very confident. I, any si social situation I can handle, it's no, there's no gray areas. Black and white, always I understand exactly what to do. For example, the other day, I was alone in an elevator and I farted, which is legal. But uh, uh, afterwards I got out of the lobby and uh, a coworker came into the same car. Now the doors were going it's too fast, everything was flashing, I w couldn't, I couldn't do it in the moment, nothing could ha be happened. And, uh, and then, so you know what to do, you know what to do, right? Send an email, <laughs> right? Subject, I'm sorry, body, it was me. <laughs> you know, people always ask me for advice though, they're always like, Joe, Joe, what do I do if I can't tell if a friend is going in for a handshake or a hug? Well, you push him in the river, you know, because you don't need someone that demands touch. Um, here's another little thing. Here's something to keep in mind always is that, here we go, say it with me. I never, I never have to make eye contact during oral sex. Yes, you never have to, you never have to. There's a lot of ambiguity around it. Nobody knows the protocol. Well, that's the protocol. You don't have to, nobody's, here's the problem is because you, you want to see smiling eyes, but nobody can smile with that position. Nobody, you can't smile, you know? You got business. No need to, you know, at your normal job, do you have to make eye contact with people when you're typing on the computer? You know, so why do you have to, during this job? I just, if your partner has a question about it, just tell him I told him you, it's okay, you know. Um, I have a friend who recently told me that he prefers raisins to grapes. I know, I know. So what can we deduce about him? Hmm? Well, one, he's a sex offender. I mean, there's just so much to learn about someone after they say something just insane like that. I mean, I, don't, I really don't understand why you'd like raisins better than grapes. Raisins are so weird. It's like you don't get any of the juice, and then you're like, where'd all that flavor come from? If you like raisins, you, you probably like cottage cheese, and you should live in the basement. 
Okay, you can't you can't like these things. They're this they're just things we agree upon. They're they're for demons. Um speaking of raisins, uh, has anyone here had sex with someone much older? Yeah? That's good. That's good. Any anyone shout the age. 47? How How old are you? You're 26? That's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Anyone else want to shout that? 64? How old is the 64-year-old partner? You're 23 and you slept with a 64-year-old? I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of everybody. I'm so proud of everybody. I love it. You know what? It's like they say the generations can't connect, but... I, I, uh, I, I went on a date with someone and I kind of thought he was much older than me, but I couldn't tell how much until I went back to his apartment and I uh, noticed that he had a couch he doesn't eat on. Is that's how you know you're getting old, is you don't eat on your couch. Okay, if you're feeling old, just take a big old sack of chips and start eating on your couch. Because honestly, once you stop eating on there, it's, you're halfway in the grave. <laughs> but I knew that he was older and, and I didn't want to ask, you know, I like, didn't know the right time. And so, you know, one thing leads to another and you end up having sex with someone who, who knows why. You know, and, you know, so we're, you know, we're bouncing, you know, we're bouncing. And, um, and uh, I thought maybe this is the time um, to ask. And so I said, excuse me, sir. Um, uh, do, do, how old are you? And he goes, uh, I'm 56. I said, wow, oh my gosh, that's older than I thought. And he goes, oh yeah, really? How old are you? And I said, well, I was, I was 29 at the time, so I said 27. And uh, he goes, oh man, I thought you were younger. No, 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 no. Everybody trying to get a little juicy grape. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. But sometimes you're, you know, you don't know what the right thing to do is to really take revenge, but your body's like, I got this one. It just had period all over his bed. <laughs> period all over. It just is a mess. It was a crime scene. Terrible crime scene. I Speaking of periods, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to do one more period joke. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Have you guys... Thank you. Yes. We have so many people celebrating their menses today. Who here's, who here's having their period of Bonnaroo? I'm so, pre- I'm so happy for you guys. <laughs> Seems really convenient and easy to have your period here. Um, I, uh, yeah, you guys heard of Thinks? Thinks? If you haven't heard of Thinks, basically it's underpants you can go period in. But it's like, if I want to go period in my underpants, why do I got to buy something? No, but they, say, they do say it's super absorbent. But it's like, so is denim. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for having me. Keep it going. Maybe and Jessica, have a good bar. Give it up for Joe Firestone. Hey y'all, it's me, Phoebe Robinson. I'm just back to remind you that we need 300 of you to step up and support the show. If you donate 60 bucks or more right now, we're going to thank you with the official Two Dope Queens t-shirt. You can't get this anywhere else, people. I swear all my life. Like, New York Fashion Week was like, can we get these shirts? And I was like, nah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you want to show us some love and help us make this show, then make your way to 2 slash donate. And don't forget, if you help us hit our goal by giving 60 bucks or more, you will get a brand new spanking sexy 2 Queens t-shirt. I mean, it's not just the best. Thank you so much. YQY. I'm former U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara, and my new podcast is called Stay Tuned. If you look at areas where he is unconstrained, his behavior is pretty consistently awful. It's about the human side of power. Those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. And those who study policing know we don't study history. And it's about justice, fairness, and democracy. I have never had anyone who committed the crime of murder go back to prison ever again. 
Presented by WNYC Studios, Cafe, and Pineapple Street Media. Stay tuned is available wherever you listen to podcasts. We got a fun, special uh, surprise for you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught these two um, fucking super talented, awesome, kind, sweet individuals earlier helping us with our capes. Uh, but uh, they are incredible. They're doing a set later today. Um, they're legends. Please welcome TGN Hello. We gotta put our mics down, we're so short. Can you guys stand a little further yeah, away I'll from Yeah, I'll try, us? just to adjust perspective. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, the this four of us on stage is like really cool. This is it like is the cool. best slumber party. Yeah. Ever. This, this is like the Grammys when they put different artists together, do like a, like a like legendary. A medley, yeah. Like a medley? This is yeah. really cool, I this love This is it. us. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for having us. We're massive fans. We fall asleep oh. listening to you in our bunks on tour. Oh. <laughs> I cook. I cook my Blue Apron listening to you guys. Oh, oh. that's yeah. iconic. The two most important things in my life: Blue Apron and sleeping. And you're with me for both. So <laughs> thank you thank so much. You. Thank you. That's dope. Uh, but I, I'm such a huge fan of you two. Uh, I fell in love with y'all in high school yeah. and just like wrote it out ever since. So I'm really excited to see your set today. Yeah. Yeah, we're really excited. Bonner is amazing. And this, is this your guys' first time? Yeah, this is our yeah. first time. Here? It's it's, a, you guys have been here before. We have been here before. We actually played in 2008, and then we came back at 1 in the morning that day, and we performed with Tiesto. And Sarah, um, she wasn't drunk, but she fell down these stairs. and oh, she. No. But she I got really, up there, and I, she raved so hard. It was awesome. Yeah, wow. I really wasn't drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you have any like Bonnaroo tips? This is like our first one. Yeah, do you have like, any tips, anything we should do? We, ha we always say that there's two types of people that are born in the world. People who like attend and really like festivals and then the people who perform at festivals who are too weak to go to a festival in real life. <laughs> That's me. That's yeah. me. Tegan yeah. and I, like, we can't go to real festivals. We, I, like, faint in the heat, and I yeah. don't like to, I don't like to go in the outhouse. I don't like smells of other people's bathrooms. Yeah, are, you, are you guys yeah. camping here? Absolutely not. I'm just kidding. Absolutely I know not. you would say that. No I'd way. Be, we're, we're not nature hotel. girls. We're yeah. not nature girls. Yeah, the camping, we drove by the camping area. Is everyone here camping? Who's camping? Yeah. It's so... It's admirable. Scary. I don't, okay. I'd like I, a tour, if anyone would like to give me a tour later on of the yeah. campground. <laughs> we did, we did a little mini tour through the no. campgrounds. Yeah, yeah, we took a little tour. And it was like, some of the setups were fucking ridiculous. Like, it felt like <laughs> camp. Yeah. Like, yeah. some people, it felt, I was telling Phoebe, I was like, it feels like the Quidditch World Cup. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She was like, that's gross, what does that mean? Um, but it was like very magical. Like it just yeah. felt like you'd walk in one of the tiny tents and it'd be this huge hotel. Yeah. You should that's spend a night is. there. I'm sure someone would let you stay in their tent with I'm them. I'm not available. <laughs> I'm not available. I'm not available. This is like a great setup. Like it's yeah. a good tent. Really cool. Yeah, you guys get air conditioning. They just put us up on the big stage where you just like hope that you don't die like during your set. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We. Uh, got to sort of see some people do sets on that big stage. And I don't, like, what does it feel like to have people singing your songs back at you? Because you have such a big catalog. It's very cool. It's very cool. I mean, not temperature-wise. It's very hot. <laughs> but extremely hot. Uh, keep going with the temperature jokes. Yeah, I'm like just going to keep. <laughs> stick on your theme. Until one really lands, I'm going to just keep. Yeah, you I'm should. It's really hot. Try one more time. right now. I got you. Give me one of these. I got you. It's very cool. It's a... Uh, we started playing music right out of high school when we graduated in 1997. So we've made eight, eight records. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. 97, going to heaven, what? Was that, was that what it was? Yeah, what was the exactly motto? like that. Cool. So 
But yeah, it never gets old. It's really exciting. But you know, Sarah and I, our big thing, I think this is why we like you guys so much, is that secretly I think we've always kind of wanted to be comedians. We tell each other, like we tell stories and we banter, and a big part of our show is interacting with the audience. And so in a strange way, that's like, we're kind of living our dream right now. Oh, wow. like that's okay. We we want to be musicians, yeah. so that's let's why, trade. Let's trade. That's why we get we got those like crazy ass capes made. Yeah, we like so to crowd cool. surf. Normally we crowd surf, but I, we're not. I have a proposition. This might be bonkers. What is it? You didn't talk to me about. I this. know because I just thought of it. I'm oh, like you're a being bad today. You're so um, bad. <laughs> I kind of like want Justin to just like dance on stage during one of your songs. Yeah, today. I just absolutely. Like, wow. What? what? Would you like to come out? Would you like to come out and dance with us? Um, we play closer to, to end the set. Would you come out yeah! and play closer with us? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> All right, done. Yeah, yes. you are a real one. You're so crazy. <laughs> That's wow, gonna we be did fire. not discuss this. Thank you so much. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. We need dancers. I think that's really what's missing from Tegan and Sarah is dancers. I feel like we've hit like the glass ceiling of popularity until we accept we need dancers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're ready to get up there and pop it, and I'm yeah. gonna make sure I stretch. Okay. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a liability. I'm not gonna hurt myself up there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like scared. Because you know, I, did you guys hear? I, I have my boobs out like today. Look great. So when I get up there, I'm like scared about like getting that's up there right. and working. It. I think that's really okay. gonna help us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Because we pretty much never show any boobs. This is like the most revealing top <laughs> I own. It's you really sort of see my arms. It's through a it. really sheer top. <laughs> and is like, that Madonna? Yeah, this is Madonna. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's why I wear. I pair the Madonna shirt with the very, very revealing <laughs> um, mesh. Jacket. <laughs> Sarah, is this the most revealing top that you wear? Well, I do feel I don't normally wear a t-shirt, but it's a big day for Sarah. <laughs> what do you guys wear? I'm confused. Like I wear like a leather jacket or oh, like right, right. I don't know. I like layers. We yeah. grew up in Canada. I like didn't even I'd never even not been in a snowsuit until the 2000s. Yeah. Like I was <laughs> We came to America and they were like, "You can't wear a snowsuit on stage." It's yeah, not no. doesn't look good. But yeah, I don't usually wear a t-shirt and I feel so, like I could be in a bikini right now. Like I feel yeah. so shy. Yeah, Aww. that's tight, that's tight. No, you guys are like so cute, you got great style. I love the We didn't even plan pants. this, Phoebe, we didn't yeah. even plan this. This just happened. We came it's out just, of our comfort great. inn and it was like yeah. twin memo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, so you guys are twins, which is like always like exciting to me because I watch Sister Sister, so that's yeah. like. yeah. That's what it calls that's, up. Yeah. That's like back. what I know about twindom. Yeah. So, but like, what's been like, like what's been your experience being twins? Like, well, we've never, we didn't have any other siblings, so we really only know what it's like to be twins. But we always say that it kind of prepared us for being musicians because when we were really little, we were born two months early and we were super fat babies, like because they just fed us formula like all the time. That's and so cute. It's really cute. That's so cute. Guys. We had like the tiniest, tiniest, chubbiest arms and legs, and then we were just like this big ball, and we had full heads of hair when we came out. I know that sounds terrifying. You guys terrifying. Were like, sound like the dude at my bodega in New York. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. But um, our whole lives, people would, my mom said they would come up to us and be like, are you twins? And then we used to cry and hide. And so, so it's exactly like how we are now when people yeah. come up to us on the street. <laughs> yeah, totally. And are like, uh, are you Tegan and Zara? And then we just start crying. Usually. I like it now. I love attention now. But I, I think we felt really shy when we were kids because we stood out. And we were really, in, we were introverts when we were kids. So. Yeah. There's also, sometimes, I don't know if this is, I've, I don't really feel like we're famous, but I wonder. Uh, you are. Yeah, you're no, a I just mean, that's generous. Thanks, Bonnaroo. Thank I just you. mean. If you're like a woke, like smart fucking lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. you know what's up with yeah. you guys. I just, I just mean that I think sometimes there's insecurity when you become famous that people don't really like you. They just want to be around you because you have a lot of power or you have like yeah. visibility or whatever. And I think in a weird way, Tegan and I, we thought that being twins was really cool, but we always downplayed it because we were afraid that people only liked us because we were twins. Oh my God, really? You, in high school, you were worried people were friends with us because we were Not twins? Not in high school. <laughs> I was on acid. But I, in <laughs> elementary school, I was freaking out. I was like... I just don't know if Heather McPherson really wants to be my Who's friend. thinking about that in elementary school? <laughs> Me. Oh I was also God. very afraid of Jeffrey Dahmer and I was a very... A reasonable yeah. fear. A completely reasonable fear. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I was a really, I was a very sensitive kid. I was worried that, I was worried about authenticity and I was worried about serial killers. You That's know? dope. <laughs> That's dope. 
I uh, have a question because I'm I'm getting into crystals just in general, like oh the concept of crystals. Congratulations! Thank you so much. It's huge. Do you did you ever feel connected, or is that all just like bullshit? Do you ever feel each other, or no, or what's your what's your experience been? I mean, I think because we've had such um, like growing up, we didn't get separated. Like you know, it wasn't one of those twin awful twin stories that you hear about, like where parents sent them to separate schools or anything. We were uh -huh. really close, and we had a lot of the same friends and a lot of the same hobbies and things. So I think there's a closeness and an intimacy that you, you do have like a, a, an inherent, almost unexplainable connection. And, but you like, we, we get asked this in every interview we ever do, like, do we feel each other's pain? Can we read each other's minds? And Sarah and I are always like, we would not be here. I'd be in casinos, like playing cards right, if I could read right. Sarah's mind. Like, like I'd be making like mad cash doing something like, that I could use my mind like for, but um, but I think there's there is. Some, I mean, how do you explain the fact that we both wear black almost all the time, and we both came out wearing white pants? Who knows? How? But magic. That's I know, how. like me and my mom. Like my mom likes to be like, we're so connected, you know. Yeah. And I'm always like, mom, no. Nah. She's like, I literally made you. Um, <laughs> but she'll, she'll call me a lot of times, like when something's happening for me, like when I'm super stressed out. She'll really? be like, yeah. She'll be like, what's going on? What are you stressed out about? Or something like, I'll be like, how did you know? She's like, I felt you. I'm like, how? She's like, you came out of my coochie, that's how. So That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So If my know. mom said the word coochie, I would hang up the phone and change my phone number. I know, no, you know what? I had it, I was also an introverted kid and, and my mom always spoke to me like an adult, no I matter love what. That. Like she wasn't swearing at me, but she was telling me about her day and I was quiet, so I would just like listen. But I know whenever I was like, when I had like low self-esteem, when I was like a pre-teen mom, I'd be like, I don't know what you have low self-esteem for. You came from my coochie and I look good. <laughs> like she would say. That's awesome. Or she would say, like if I did something wrong, she was like, I don't know why you did that. You came from my coochie. Why would you do that? <laughs> she, awesome. your mom says coochie a lot. Um, She's that's a coochie cool. woman. That's, that's cool. Maybe coochie's <laughs> not that big in Canada. Coochie's not a big one. I don't no. think they so. They didn't make it over the border? No, it's I don't think It's pretty so. crass. Like yeah. it's pretty, um, horrific of a yeah. word. Yeah. What do, you, what do you guys say for vagina in Canada? I just stay away from saying the word. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> we just use a lot of symbols. Although one time our mom actually, I remember there was a Christmas <laughs> where my mom got uh, the vagina monologues and she read it at Christmas Iconic. to everybody. Yes. Iconic. That I Christmas, did the so vagina like monologues. Uncle Earl, like yeah. everybody got it. Yeah, well, there's That's mostly cool. women in our family, okay. but it was like my grandpa was like, here we go. And, and then and she just read the vagina, like, but she gets very emotional when she reads. Actually, Aww. you know what? My mom did, when Sarah and I came out, she, my mom's a... Not of her, out of her coochie. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, 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 disclaimer, or sorry, uh, Thank clarification. Thank you for clarifying. Clarification. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. When, Sarah, when Sarah came out first as being uh -huh. gay, uh -huh. um, and then I followed shortly a couple months later, my mom got us female condoms. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Still to this day, one of the most traumatizing parts of me coming out. In fact, How maybe she, the only part. Did she wrap it like as a gift and then present like what's under the tree? No, no. She's, no. A, she's a social worker and uh -huh. she like, a, you know, like she, yeah, she's like a really progressive feminist like mom. And she was like, had had kind of like a, 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 a not a great reaction initially, which was odd because everyone in our lives was really alternative, including my mom. Uh -huh. But she came around really quickly. Uh -huh. And I think this was sort of like her like, I'm sorry present. Like, she was like, okay, the you're The worst gay. sorry present like, ever. I can't think of anything worse. And I know that's terrible because we should be encouraging safe sexual health, but like anyone else could have dropped them off. Even if my mom had just like tossed them on a table, but like, <laughs> yeah, she like kind of really gave them to us. And it was just, um, yeah. It's you awesome. rather, I, I, I'm you actually, would have rather her like been in a car, like a truck driving by, throw them out the yeah, window anything, by you. Anything, anything, yeah, <laughs> anything. Like they come under the door. I don't know, I was really, <laughs> Yeah, it was weird. Mailed them to us from her. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Wait, so do you two live together? No, we... How weird would that be? Oh, no, I thought you said we... I thought you said we... Make oh, yeah, we talk about we. We're, we're, we're insane. We're, yeah, we say we all the time. We it's have, so yeah. fun. My therapist said that we have very difficult times uh, being eyes and not just we's all the time. That's a good therapist. Yeah, like, I yeah. love my therapist. Her name's Heather, and she's always giving me, like, <laughs> yeah. things to carry around. And it's like, ooh, Aww. fuck me up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love my therapist, too. And I just recently saw a couple's therapist with my girlfriend, and How it was, was amazing. Wow. wow. Yeah, you guys, yeah. try it. My try parents it. are actually couple's therapist. Like, they do couple's therapy. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've heard your mom's it's advice. Really it's really helpful. <laughs> it's so helpful.
Yeah, Wait. like what did you learn? Like were you nervous? Were you afraid? And the- Yeah, I was, I was all of those things. And she made us do this really weird thing to start our first session. She made us look at each other in silence for seven minutes. No, that was the I'm joke. Out. I was going to make the joke. I was going to say, I'm out. what did she make you stare at each other yeah. in silence? Yeah. And that's literally and what then I said. That she, Horrific. And she didn't like organize a drawer or like go in another room. She watched us. She was no. observing us look Organized. at each other. That's literally that like sensual. I'm into no, it. No, that's like eyes wide shut. I that's like how that it. movie started. I loved it. That's so into that's it. That's crazy. I and can't. my and then my therapist. Oh, my girlfriend's gonna kill me. But anyways, <laughs> my therapist was like, uh, Sarah, like, what did you think while you were looking at Stacy? And I was like. She's just so amazing and smart. Aww. And when I look at her, I just feel safe and grounded and like realized. And then the therapist was like, Stacy, what did you feel? And she was like, most uncomfortable seven minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I am so used to Sarah talking that it was so unsettling to have to just look at her <laughs> not talking at me. Okay, That's what funny. is the point of a seven? Like, I can understand like one minute. But like seven minutes, it's like literally mental torture. Okay, see, as a therapist, I just want to say right now that <laughs> you guys have great communication. Like, <laughs> you're so much more advanced than most of the people I see in my practice, that you was, know? <laughs> like, you're, you're already practice. there, you know? <laughs> and that was just from like 35 seconds. So when you, when you guys leave and you guys go and see the other sets and stuff, I want you guys to make sure that you guys reach out and stare at the guy who's serving you your beer. Yeah. <laughs> just take a minute. And just connect with him. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, thank you guys so much thank for joining you. us. Thanks, Thanks, all of you. Thanks, everyone. Everybody give it up for TV is really funny. You know him from Comedy Central. He has an awesome special out called Laughing and Crying at the Same Time. Please give it up for Chris Garcia! You guys having fun? Did you guys rip it up last night or what? Me too. Woo, I went a little too hard the first night. But I'm happy to be here. I'm feeling great. Let's get into it. I, uh, when I was a kid, I was fat. Yeah, anybody else play goalie? Yeah, hell yeah. I played goalie in five different sports. When you're, you know, if you're a fat kid, that'll follow you the rest of your life, like the ghost of Keebler's past. It is just always there. My whole life I've ballooned in weight. I'll get fat, I'll get skinny, I'll just, constantly, I'm just like this. I'm just like, one moment I'm Jonah Hill, and then I'm Jonah Hill, and then I'm Jonah Hill, and then I'm Jonah Hill, and I just want to be somewhere in the middle, Seth Rogen. I just want to do that. Consistently. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And I don't know what you said, uh, but so I was living in San Francisco and I was dating this woman that was out of my league, which sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. It was kind of a nightmare because I was like, oh, I'm, she caught me in a real good skinny moment. And I was like, this is not going to last. In a relationship, like a year and a half, the truth comes out. You know what I mean? After all that froyo, you put on that Netflix 15 and that's what happened. I put on the Netflix 15 and... She, she started acting a little weird, you know? And one day she left her G-chat open at my apartment on my laptop, and I, I had to do it. I took a peek, and I found out, she was telling her friend, she was like, hey, I think I'm gonna dump Chris. I'm not attracted to him anymore. And she's like, why? She's, and she said, because he's starting to look like a fat Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Ouchies. I mean, Peter Dinklage, I think he's a handsome, sexy dude. I'm not going for fat Dinklage, you know what I mean? That's not the look I'm going for. So I freak out and immediately I'm like, I gotta lose weight. I tried all this stuff. 
I tried to, I tried to sign up for CrossFit. Yeah, but they turned me away because I had a uh, happy childhood or whatever. Like, they wouldn't let me. They turned me away. I tried yoga, but I didn't get anything out of holding farts for 45 minutes. I tried the master cleanse, that juice cleanse where you drink lemonade and cayenne pepper, just that for 12 days. And uh, you diarrhea the weight away. I lost a lot of weight, but I also lost friends because I was blowing up their bathrooms. And I gained the weight right back, and I was like, what am I gonna do? I look at the back of the weekly paper, and there's an ad for a boxing boot camp. Eight weeks, it's got a before and after picture. I went for it. I signed, it's five days a week, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I was like, I'm gonna commit, I'm gonna do some fat Rocky shit. I'm gonna whip my girl back, this is gonna be dope. I show up to class, it's these like Irish gold gl glove boxers. They're like, they're like, Ola! I didn't understand anything they said. They were like Bono in reverse. It was like, <laughs> but they knew what they were doing and they taught me how to box and all this stuff. And around that time, my girlfriend, she left her G-chat open again. She said she wanted to leave me still, but she had a crush on a DJ. Leave me for a DJ? I was like, have fun having fucking bed bugs and paying for his rent, you know? I was like, fuck that. But then I looked him up and this dude is fine. Straight up, he looked like Persian Common. Imagine the most handsome Persian guy and Common at the same time. Imagine how beautiful his goatee is. I would have sucked that guy's dick. The guy's a straight up dime, so I'm like, oh, this is, I'm not proud of this, but I got so mad and I was in such a sense of urgency that I printed out, I went on his Facebook page, I printed out a picture of him and I put him in the locker at the boxing gym for motivation. This gay guy in my class is like, is that your boyfriend? He's beautiful. I'm like, no, it's not my boy. It's my girlfriend's boyfriend. I'm mad. I'm, so I'm taking boxing class and we're doing like, finally we start to spar. It's like practice boxing. We're allowed, only allowed to punch each other in the stomach for this exercise. I punch the guy I'm fighting in the stomach. He blocks himself, ends up punching me. I punched him in the dick. I just like, boom, punched him in the dick. And he's like, hey, you're punching me in the dick. And I was like, I punched you in the stomach. You blocked yourself in a weird way. You punched yourself in the dick. I punch him in the stomach again, boom, right in the dick. He gets mad, he punches me in the face. Blood goes everywhere. I look down, my shirt is covered in blood, and I go, oh, fuck no. Boom! And then we start just taking swings at each other. The whole class stops, everyone circles around us. The Irish coaches are just like, finally, some fucking boxing in here! And I got such a thrill, I was like, I love this shit. I'm gonna do this to a Persian comment, and I'm gonna get my girl back. I, got, I was in a weird state. Uh, not my girl, it's lady's choice. But anyway, I was like, I was, I conflated the two issues where I'm like, I'm gonna beat, I'm just gonna punch my, the weight away and get, uh, you know, make my girlfriend like me again. The boxing coaches notice how much I'm into this class and they're like, hey, will you sign up? Uh, we're doing a fight night at the end of the eight weeks. We open up the gym, you can invite your friends and family, we'll have ringsider girls, an announcer, referees, and you could box like in front of your friends and we'll simulate like a real boxing match. And I was like, this is perfect. I'm a comedian, I love crowds, I'm gonna invite everyone, I'm gonna invite my girlfriend, she's gonna see me beat up some dude in public and she's gonna love me again. That's what I was thinking. And so they're like, we're not gonna tell you who you're boxing until the day of the match. The day of the match, they're like, you're boxing this guy, a buff, six foot two, blonde, white, frat boy. And I was like, this guy's, I'm like five, you know, nine in heels, you know? I'm like, short of this guy. This guy's already, he came in with muscles. I still look like a young Homer Simpson, you know what I mean? And so I don't, the day of the fight, I'm, I'm like panicking, I don't know what to do. I call my dad, my dad's an old Cuban guy. Old Cuban guys love boxing. It was like I have my own Mr. Miyagi. That eight mangoes all the time. And so I just, I call my dad, I'm like, Poppy. I call him Poppy because that's what I call my dad, not because he's Pitbull, you know what I mean? Uh, but I said, Poppy, I'm fighting this guy today. What do I do? He's like, oh, you just get in there and bang, 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 boom. Just beat him up. And you win, you're gonna win. All you gotta do is boom, bang, 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 and you win. I'm like, Dad, he's like this buff, six foot two guy, and he's like, oh yeah, you're gonna lose. You got no chance, man. 
unless you can only beat him psychologically. You got to get inside this guy's head. And I'm like, okay. And he told me some weird things. And I was like, okay. So what I did is I immediately shaved my head with a beard trimmer. I just shaved my head real crazy. It looked real bad. Like I was shearing a sheep for the first time or some shit. It would just look real bad. But I was like, that looks crazy. And then I wore these dirty white basketball shorts. I hiked my socks all the way up to my knees. I was the only boxer that did not wear a shirt this whole time. And when I showed up to the fight night, I was like jumping rope wrong, like I'd never done it before. I was just like, I was pretending to box right-handed, even though I'm left-handed. I'm like, I'm gonna trick this guy. <laughs> so everyone gets to the fight. All my friends are there. People drove up. My high school friends from Los Angeles drove up to see me fight. My girlfriend's late. She's nowhere to be seen. The fight was took place right on the street in front of a window. She shows up late. She's standing right in the window. And it's like really cinematic, like a, a Rocky thing. And I'm standing in the ring, and I see her, and I see this guy, and everyone's around, and it's, and the announcer goes, "Hey, do you want me to say anything?" I'm like, "Yeah, call me the Cuban Missile Crisis." <laughs> I'm getting all pumped. Fight starts. I'm like, "All right, let's do this." I'm like, I don't even look the guy in the face because I think if I, if I look him in the face, he's gonna see me as a human and know that he could beat the shit out of me. So I didn't look at him. I just was like, like acting real crazy. Fight starts. He just uses my face as a punching bag. He's just like, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, ah. And then I go back. Fight starts again, and I just start jumping and punching him like fucking Mike Tyson's punch out. I'm just like, boom, like punching, like, like I have an axe in my hand. I'm just like, ba, ba, ba. And the referee stops and he's like, stop it. You're out of control. I spit my bloody mouth guard out and I go, this guy's bigger than me. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm like, and the crowd goes, yeah. And the crowd is on my side. And as a comedian, I was like, yeah. And it felt great, right? The guy beats me up again. And I'm like, oh. I go into the corner. My boxing coaches. He br he brings me. And he's like, all right, blah blah. I can't do an Irish accent. And he's like, he's like, I put you in here because you have a lot of heart. And and I think you could beat this guy up. I wouldn't put you up against a guy you couldn't beat up. You're left-handed. He's right-handed. You kind of have a little bit of an advantage if you keep your right foot on the outside of his his left foot, and he comes in for a hook. All you got to do is duck and punch him in the stomach. And he's like, and you got to chop down that tree. And I was like, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll give it a shot, right? Fight starts again. The guy punches me again. I get a little wobbly. He comes in with a hook. I duck him. Boom. Boom. I punch him all the way across the ring from hitting him in the stomach. They stop the fight again, and we go back in. The guy just like psh, he punches me in the eye, and my eyes like swollen and shut, so straight up like a Rocky movie. And like at that point, I see my girlfriend. She's like worried, and I like think about my dad, and I think about Persian Common, and this is like a very. I'm like whoa. I was like this is my chance. Like I gotta prove myself. Like I know it's kind of crazy to conflate these two things, but this is what I wanted to do, and I need to take this guy out. And so he comes with the hook again, and I just I chop down the tree. The mouth guard comes out of his mouth. He loses his air, and they stop the fight, and I beat him in the first round. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised too. And then after the fight, my girlfriend, I'm all sweaty, and there's blood on me and stuff, and she's really turned on. She just saw me beat up some guy that's, you know, way bigger than me, and she hugged me, and she's like, "Oh, you've got all these new muscles. We hadn't had sex in eight weeks. You know what I mean? Because we just stopped having sex." And uh, she was like, "Whoa, what are these muscles?" And so we went home. I showed her what the Cuban Missile Crisis was all about. And then a week later, I broke up with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love is unconditional, you know what I mean? You gotta love me for me. And if there's one thing I love more than her in boxing, it's donuts. I'm a fat kid for life and proud. You guys have been so fun. Have a nice weekend, you guys. Good night. Keep it going for Chris Garcia. Just for Tegan and Sarah, Joe Firestone, and Chris Garcia. Two Dope Queens is produced by Joanna Saltaroff, Jim Point, Paula Schumann, Rachel Neal, Phoebe Robinson, and Jessica Williams. Our team includes Joe Plord, Matt Boynton, Ed Haber, Isaac Jones, and Shanoa Estrada. Our theme music was composed by Jeff Broski. 
And have you guys been on Twitter lately? We've been doing some pretty hard-hitting polls like which Franco brother would you smash? Give us some suggestions for more polls at Two Dope Queens. Dave won by landslide, BT Dubs. And subscribe! You don't want to miss a single episode of this season. Kata for now, Hoochie Mamas and Daddies. Adios, despacito. And don't forget, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy.